When Evernote launched the original Spaces feature, it was intended for corporate accounts, but this collaboration feature is now available to everyone. I'm Dave Edwards. We're going to look today at how to set it up and how to use Spaces, and we'll answer another viewer question about optimizing Evernote at the year's end. Spaces has been around for quite some time, but many of us have never had access to it. It was designed to provide a space for people to collaborate by gathering files and notes in a centralized location, giving people the opportunity to share and edit and collaborate. Now, it was primarily meant for the corporate accounts who had who had the Teams version of Evernote, uh, which is why a lot of us never really were exposed to it. But just before the holidays, Evernote launched a beta version of Spaces for everyone to use, as long as you're using version 10.120 or later. I have some ideas of how you can use this new feature, but first, let's take a look at how to set it up. If you come over to the uh, left column here, you will now see Spaces. Uh, this is how you get to Spaces. It, of course, says it's a beta. You uh, click on this, and then this is how you create a new space. So we click on it here, and we're going to give this a, a name. And we're going to name this uh, for a client. You have an optional description box here. Now we create the space. You get these prompts. Do you want to fill this space by creating a note, a notebook, or do you want to move in other notebooks. Start by creating a few notes uh, from within the space. Uh, individual notes inside a space can uh, serve as reference guides. Uh, maybe you want uh, a, a table of contents or page that describes what you're going to be doing. So let's create a note inside of space and we're going to create it here. And uh, we'll give it some uh, some text. It's uh, asking you if you want to create a, uh, a a new space, but you know, for our client A, we've created now exactly uh, one note. We can pin notes uh, to this box here. You always can rename the space. You can also add it to your shortcuts. If you want to create a new notebook within this collaborative space, you can name that notebook here. So now we have a project, a notebook, and a work plan note. You have the flexibility of coming over here, and you'll see the same kind of commands that you are used to outside of spaces. So once you've added a few notes and notebooks to your space, uh, this is where it's fun. This is where you get to uh, create a collaborative environment. Once we've got a project here, we want to share this with someone. We come over and we decide who we want to share the uh, note with. We're giving them permission to edit and invite uh, a person to our shared space. So now I'm going to invite someone to my notebook and they will have complete access uh, to this Project A notebook. You notice here that uh, uh, these little, this little symbol here indicates that I have given permission uh, to these individuals, myself and one other person, um, to access this note. If somewhere down the line I want to revoke this person's uh, permission, all I have to do is come over and remove that person's access from this shared workspace. So how am I going to use this? Well, I have a number of clients that I meet with, you know, once or twice, but I have other clients that I meet with regularly. So I'm going to create a space uh, for each of my clients. Uh, and then in there, I can uh, create summaries of our calls as well as ideas for them to try. Uh, and they will not only have access to these notes, but they can post their own observations and uh, 
we can look at all of these notes the next time we have a check-in opportunity. So now when Evernote rolled out this Spaces feature, they were very careful to say that it was a beta version. So you should probably assume that it will continue to evolve, and who knows, there might even be some bugs along the way. I'm going to keep you posted on the evolution of Spaces, and I'd like to suggest that you let me know how you are using this feature, how you're going to use it, what you like about it, suggestions that you have, if you have some ideas. I'll uh, pass those along to the Evernote folks next time I'm on a call with them uh, as part of the Evernote experts group. Okay, let's get to a viewer question. Sherry writes, Happy New Year, Dave. Is there anything I should do at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year to keep my Evernote optimized? Well, Happy New Year to you too, Sherry, and to everyone watching. I actually do a year-end review and cleanup of my Evernote account because it is the heart of my productivity system. And, you know, if it gets kind of funky, then it won't be as effective for me. So what I always suggest to people who ask me this question is the very first thing you need to do is to make sure you're running the latest version of Evernote. Uh, and, and if it's not the latest version, uh, you can go to their website and, and check. Uh, make sure that the auto update feature is set on. Now, I know some people don't like to be the first person to update uh, a, a new software program. But what's worse is that if you avoid updating, then the software you run isn't the latest version, may have some bugs, may run slowly, you'll probably complain about it. So I always have the auto update on for Evernote, and it makes my life a whole lot easier. Then I go through all of my notebooks. I create an archive. I have an archive for uh, personal notes. I have an archive for my consulting clients. I have an archive for the teaching that I do. And I find that, you know, by the end of the year, there are things in my active folders that I don't regularly use. And so anything that I'm not regularly using, I put in the archive. Now, of course, it doesn't mean it's gone. Of course not. It's still in a folder, but it's not in the active folders. So if I want to do a search, I can instantly find uh, my uh, archived files, but they're not taking up space when I open up a notebook. I'm not seeing all of that clutter. So the other thing I do is uh, in the task feature, I uh, clear out any old tasks. Uh, you know, sometimes they end up just with a line through it if you've completed it. Or let's say you have a note and a task folder and uh, you're no longer using it. Get rid of it or archive it. I go through all of my recurring items uh, on the task list. Uh, are they still necessary or, or do they just you know, annoy me every time they, they turn up? Get rid of those. Uh, is my inbox cleared out? I'm a big proponent of processing everything that's in your Evernote inbox uh, at least once a week. I also stare at my screen, the Evernote screen, <laughs> and I think about whether my entire system is optimized. Do I have the right kind of notebooks? Do I have the right kind of notebook stacks? Would, do some notebooks better belong in a stack? Would that make my navigation uh, easier? I take a look at my tags. What tags do I no longer use? Delete them. Uh, what, tabs, what tags do I need? Create them. Kind of get the idea. I spend a little time in Evernote, not to do work, but I set aside some special time to assess my Evernote system. Oh, and here's another hint. Do this more than once a year, but the beginning of a new year is an ideal time to get started. Oh, one more thing that's uh, pretty much unrelated uh, to what we've been talking about today, but still important. Uh, Evernote announced a fix uh, right around the holidays, and some people didn't see it. It has everything to do with links and backlinks uh, in Notes. Uh, on a recent release of Evernote, uh, backlinks were not showing up. And that issue has, has now been fixed. But the caveat is that if you created any uh, links uh, in the last week or so, they might not work. So you might want to check them because if you uh, they were working just fine. So if you created any uh, previous links, uh, you won't have a problem with that. 
But if in the last week or so, or just before the holidays, you created some links, uh, you might want to go back and just check them. Uh, but uh, now we're all in the clear. They say that they fixed the problem and backlinks will work once again. Sherry, good luck on your review. I really appreciate it. Leave a comment for me if you have any questions about Evernote, and I will try to answer them in a future episode. Actually, you can just leave a comment below, or if you really want to make sure I see it, you can always send me an email at daveedwards at outlook.com. I hope you have a great 2025.